What is up YouTube and welcome to this Bad Batch episode recap, breakdown and review. Now this was a very very short episode and unfortunately this will be a shorter video as I'm also working on a spiral video but I wanted to bring you a video on the Bad Batch which I am loving watching each week and I may even do a video on MODOK which just dropped on Star Plus in the UK as well. But this was a very, very short episode, but really heavy on the action. It had some pretty decent world building as we feature Fennec Shand, the character we last saw in The Mandalorian Season 2 post credit scene, and will feature in Boba Fett's story as well. His own show is coming, which I am super pumped to see. Now, we open with the Bad Batch heading to continue on their run and being kind of on the other side of the law for once as really as the clones they've been the dominant force and really been the good guys so to speak and they originally head to the planet Idaflor, except they have to end up heading to Pentora as they not only need supplies as they're out of rations but they also need to scramble their ship's ID as they are on the run. Of course it will prove difficult as chain codes and the like are really heading out across all planets in the galaxy. Now this was a planet Pentora that was featured in the Clone Wars in quite a few seasons as well so it's nice to see some dipping into that and I think that now that Dave Filoni is an executive and creative director we're going to see more uniformity around the whole Star Wars franchise which is very very much needed in my eyes. Now, as well as this, they're also ripped off by the landing pad owner, who is like, yeah, you can you can chill here. Uh, I won't scan your ship so you don't get caught, but, well, you're going to have to pay a bit more. But, yeah, it's dodgy as he instantly calls a bounty hunter as they are on a wanted list. Now, he calls in Fennec Shand as Omega is the main target here, presumably because she is the most powerful, really, out of all of the Bad Batch, and the Kamino cloners want her to make a super special clone as their contract is in jeopardy with Tarkin and of course, his little lackey from the other week. Now, she first appeared in The Mandalorian, who, well, she had a bounty on her head there in The Mandalorian, and Din went with a rookie bounty hunter to take her out. Now, we did presume that she was dead, and there was that kind of spur sound, which we thought was Boba Fett, which... Yeah, it was true. And she returned with Boba Fett, which was just superb last season. And she's, of course, voiced by Ming-Na Wen, who, of course, Mulan and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you haven't seen The Mandalorian, uh, just, just go watch it. Seriously, just go watch it. Now, Omega, Hunter, and Echo go out as Echo is dressed up as a droid, which is hilarious as the war is now over and the citizens celebrate the Imperials and chain codes are needed as the Empire is there changing the galaxy incredibly fast. We're now seeing that people are accepting this new Empire which is troubling for people who are in the resistance and on the other side here like Clone Force 99. As well as this, Wrecker is also acting more and more aggressive which is very worrying as I do think that he will turn just like Crosshair and at the market it was so funny when Tech is actually sold pretending to be a droid it does continue on in the tradition there of people dressing up as stormtroopers and now droids here in the Star Wars franchise at the market we also see some, see some loathe wolves which who are integral to Star Wars Rebels and if you haven't seen this do check out Star Wars Rebels I've seen people say that they don't like the animation which I like it personally I know they look like like those Disney Infinity characters, but I thought they were pretty dope, and it's it's just a superb series here. Now, Omega goes missing, chasing a creature as Shand watches on and tricks her. I thought it was cute how Omega tried to recruit her to the crew, and we even see someone speak hut ease, a hint there to, to of course, Fennec taking out the huts with Boba. Echo's hiding in the droid ship, which was an enjoyable piece of comedy there as well. And to be honest, the chase scene did take up almost all of the episode, and it was a short episode at that, with Omega being spotted on the cameras, similar to those ones on the Death Star, and Fennec best wrecker and almost Hunter, but of course Hunter gets to escape with Omega, leaving Fennec 
to stay on the planet and uh, threaten the pad owner there. The Bad Batch leave and the pad owner doesn't get his payment. It will be now a big problem as they're being hunted not only by expert bounty hunters, but also Tarkin and Crosshair. And I'm really liking that they're expanding these characters there within the Star Wars universe. They're going more really doubling down on the style of the MCU within the Disney Star Wars universe, which I think is pretty good. And I'd love to hear what you think down on the episode. It was very short. It was very quick. Not really a lot happened, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. So do let me know what you think down below. I do have an Army of the Dead video up as well, so you can check that out. And I will be having a spiral video tomorrow. And I might do a video on Modoc, but unfortunately I don't have the time to watch the whole season in just a few days so I might just enjoy that with my breakfast in the morning so that is it for this video I'll see you soon goodbye and please do have an awesome day and weekend if I don't have you watching my videos in between